writing a literature review is an integral part of a research project, a dissertation, a thesis, but a lot of people do find this a bit tricky. So in today's video, I'm going to give you lots of helpful tips and tricks on how to write an amazing literature review. My name is Dr. Hayley Stainton, in case you are new here, and I have marked probably thousands of literature reviews in my time as a university lecturer. So I'm going to give you lots of advice based on my experience working in academia and marking other students' work. So let's start off by explaining what exactly is a literature review and what should it look like. A literature review is a description of the literature relevant to a particular field or a particular topic. It gives an overview of what's been said, who the key writers are, what are the prevailing theories and hypotheses, what questions are being asked, and what methods and methodologies are appropriate and useful. As such, it is not in itself primary research, but rather it reports on other findings. So when we are doing a research project, it's important that before we delve in too deep and start collecting our own data, we know what data is already out there, what studies have already been done. So your literature review, essentially, should be a summary of the existing research in your field. Now, some people do find this a little bit tricky if they choose a topic that there isn't a lot on. And that's part of the reason to do your research project, because there's not a lot on it. So then people will say to me, but what do I write about in the literature review if there is no literature already? Well, that's where your conceptual framework comes in. So what I often recommend to my undergraduate students is that you aim for a triangle. And on that triangle, you write down, and this would be my preliminary kind of planning stage, you write down what are the three main concepts, the three main issues. So let's say, for example, I am doing a research project on the environmental impacts of tourists visiting Phuket in Thailand. Now, I would think up my three main concepts. You can have more, you can have less, but three is generally a fairly good starting point or a good guide. And I would think, what are the three things I can look at? Maybe there are no studies, I'm pretty sure there are actually, but let's, let's say there are no studies at the moment on the environmental impacts of Thailand. That doesn't matter. I would have one section on the environmental impacts of tourism in general. I would maybe have another section on tourism in Thailand or even better, tourism in Phuket, with lots of stats and things like that. And maybe I might want to look at management strategies. Perhaps one of the aims of my research project is to come up with suggestions on how tourism could be better managed to be more sustainable, more environmentally friendly. So maybe I would have another section where I look at management techniques for making tourism more environmentally friendly. Now the point of your literature review is yes, if there are already similar studies, absolutely you say that, but also to draw on similar literature. So there could be a similar study to yours, um, let's stick with my, my example, there could be a similar study that's looking at the environmental impacts of tourism in Jamaica, or Costa Rica, or Vietnam, or whatever. And I might draw on studies like that as a comparison, as a guide, as a, as a sort of example, and I can talk about that in my literature review. Now, remember, and I have talked about this in my video where I do outline how to write a research project and how it does all come together. Remember that your literature review needs to link to the rest of your project. And what I've seen many times is that students have written lots of stuff and given lots of references because they think that's what they're supposed to do. And it, it sounds great, it reads great. They get great grades, but it doesn't really follow through in the rest of their project. So when you come to writing your literature review, you probably already have some aims and objectives. You should have a, a, a clear idea of the pathway that your project is going to take. And your literature review needs to be an important part of that pathway. What you do not want to do is deviate away from that path. So when you come later down the line to your discussion chapter, you should be able to discuss your results in relation to your literature. If you don't think you will be able to do that, then maybe the literature you are looking at at this point is not the right literature. Another thing that I see an awful lot with students is that they look at the literature, 
and they will say, so and so said this, and so and so said that, and this person said that, and that's the end of the paragraph. Now, you might pass, depending on what level you're studying at, but this is not really a literature review. That's just you saying what the literature is, but you need to review it. So what you want to do is, is to be really critical. So I might say, this paper looks at the environmental impacts of tourism in Phuket. However, it is 20 years old. So whilst it's a good guide, it's not up to date in any way. There is a really useful paper that is more up to date, but it's not focused on Phuket, it's actually focused on Jamaica. So it's a different part of the world and management strategies, etc. Governance is a little bit different, but it's handy to look at. Those sorts of things, you can critique the methodology. So when you, you find some research and you talk about it in your literature review, think about where did this information come from? If it's another research project that has taken place, think about how was the data collected? Was it valid? Is this a reliable study? Or is it just a college student who's written up a blog and they don't really have any valid evidence or, or credentials to be writing that? And that leads me on to something else that's really, really important when you do write your literature review, is the quality of the literature that you are reviewing. Now you want to have high quality sources. And these should be a variety of sources. So what you absolutely do not want is a literature review that relies only on online sources. Now I know a lot of what we read these days does come from the internet and it is a totally valid source, but you need to think about using a wide variety of sources. So ideally you will have books in there. So if I'm looking at the environmental impacts of tourism, there are lots of books that cover that. So I can take that off easily. If I'm looking at the environmental impacts of tourism, there are definitely a lot of websites, but I need to make sure they are good quality websites. Avoid at all costs using websites like Wikipedia. I could go on Wikipedia and I could write an article about, I don't know, farming, how to raise cows, rear cows, whatever the term is, but I know nothing about that. And I could put that out there on the internet. I could put that on my blog if I want. So that wouldn't be credible because it's coming from somebody who knows nothing about the topic. Now, for example, you could reference my website, Tourism Teacher, and I have an article on the environmental impacts of tourism. You could be fairly sure that's quite a good source because you can look at my credentials and you can see that I have a PhD in it, that I have studied at length this, in this area that I have taught. However, I can still write anything I want and nobody's really questioning me. Whereas if you use a journal article or a book, that has been reviewed and critiqued by usually other academics, sometimes industry practitioners, and you can't just write a book about anything you want. Well, I say that, there is self-publishing these days, so do have a look who's published the book too. If it's published by something like Amazon Create Space, because I've used this myself, I do know, you can just literally write a Word document, upload it onto the system, and it will print on demand when people order it. So there is no peer review process there. But if you have a credible publisher, someone like Root Ledge, Emerald, Cabby, etc., then you know that it has been through a very rigorous process in order to be published. So it should be high quality, valid research. So a literature review actually has so much to it, it's not just finding any old reference and, and putting it in there. It's really thinking about what am I reading and where am I getting this from and is this valid, etc. You want to make sure your references are up to date so they're not too old. Maybe you might want to include an older reference, but you should say in there that you are aware it is dated and you probably got a more recent reference to support what it is that you're saying there. Now in terms of starting your literature review, I would recommend that you don't just start writing. I recommend that you start with something called an annotated bibliography. Now, an annotated bibliography um, can take whatever format you want really. I personally like to use a sort of chart and I would write what is the reference, who are the authors, and then I would do a brief summary of what the text was about. So 
Doing a literature review should take you quite a bit of time because it's not just writing your work, it's doing all of the background reading behind it too. So I would recommend that you allow a good couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, depending on how many hours you have available to you, to not actually start writing anything, but to do lots and lots of reading around the subject. But it's all good and well reading, but you can very easily forget what you've read and get muddled up with where did I get what from and forget, and then that becomes difficult when you try to put it all into your literature review. So what I recommend is jot it all down in an annotated bibliography. Then you've got a, a comprehensive summary of all of the good sources, you've got a summary of what was said, and then when you come to write your literature review, you can use that, maybe revisit the sources if you need to, but you can use that to put together and pull together all these different sources. Now when you are writing a literature review, you want to have as many sources as you can, so I recommend you use cross-referencing. Now if you are not familiar with um, the different types of referencing, I do have a pretty comprehensive video on it, so do check that one out after you finish watching this video, because I'm not going to go into exactly how to do this, but cross-referencing is essentially when you reference more than one. So you are either saying there is a lot of littering in Phuket, and I might list five authors after that, because all five studies or all five sources all agree that there is a problem with litter in Phuket. I could follow that up and say, however, according to this source and this source, Phuket have made good efforts to have a reduced amount of litter on the beaches. But I can see by looking at someone else's study that this effort is focused on beaches and it doesn't really take into account the areas in the mainland. So you can see there that what I'm doing is I've read lots of things, I'm showing you I've read lots of things, and I'm bringing that all together into a cohesive story almost. So in order to get the best grades in your literature review, you need to be very critical, say what's good, what's not good. If there are gaps in the research, highlight that you need to use very good high quality sources and as many of those as you can. Cross-referencing can be a good idea. And you want to bring it all together to develop this strong cohesive argument that is in line with your project's pathway. So your aims and objectives, your research question, your hypothesis, does this literature help you with those? If not, it shouldn't be there. So let me give you a bit of a, a sneaky tip. It's not cheating, I promise. <laughs> so as I mentioned to you before, you want to use a wide variety of types of sources. But the reality is that going to the library might not be so convenient. Maybe the library's closed. So a lot of the time nowadays, we do access things online. We access journal articles online, we read ebooks online. But if you reference all of these things as an online source, you might be at risk of losing some marks because everything is coming from the internet. It looks like you could have literally just sat in your bedroom the whole time. Actually, in this day and age, that's okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with doing all of your work from home. You don't have to go and sit physically in the library. So whilst you may have accessed that journal article on your laptop, you don't need to reference it as an online source. Don't reference it as a website. Reference it as a journal article. And the same can be said for books. It's quite likely that you will use some ebooks at some point. You don't need to reference them as websites or as ebooks. Nobody is going to know whether you had the hard copy of the book or the online copy, and nobody actually cares either. So reference that as a proper book. Same can be said for newspapers. It's very easy to get newspaper articles up online nowadays. But remember that they probably were also in print at some point. So try to do a bit of digging, find the information, when they were published, what page number it was, those sorts of things, and reference it as a newspaper. This will just help your reference list to look really varied, really comprehensive, and it demonstrates that you've looked at lots of different types of sources. And just because you used your internet to facilitate that, that's actually okay. It's not cheating, I promise. It's just maybe bending the truth a tiny bit. <laughs> and before I round up this video, I'll just give you one last trick 
or tip. I recommend that you write your reference list as you are going along because I have seen so many times students that write really great literature reviews, then they write the rest of their project, a couple of months go by or whatever, then they come to writing the reference list and they say, ah, I can't find this source. I don't remember where I got this from. So I strongly recommend that you have a reference list or a bibliography or maybe both that is a work in progress. So you are continually adding all of your references into the reference list. I personally would reference everything properly right from the start because it can be quite an arduous task when you have maybe hundreds of references. That would be great. Depends on the length of your project, of course. It's a really arduous task to go back and have to find all of the details to write the reference list at the end. So that is my recommendation. Now I hope you found this video really helpful. This video is actually just one in a series of my videos all about research methods. So I'm sure if you are doing a research project, you will find those really helpful too. So I will put these up for you now and uh, choose which one is useful for you to watch next.